Chargers head coach Brandon Staley is very much on the hot seat, and if they decide to let him go after the season, they should absolutely be interested in Jim Harbaugh. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for eight seasons, but this is our sixth year as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making this your first listen today. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? We got to get into our Chargers mailbag, and the, one of the big questions is about Jim Harbaugh. Could Jim Harbaugh possibly be the Chargers head coach? Could he be? I don't know. We'll we'll talk about that. And if you had to pick which coordinator you could keep, would it be Kellen Moore or would it be Ryan Thicken? I mean, I think that's an easy one to me. We're gonna get into that. But today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Yeah, we're getting into our Chargers mailbag today, and I've seen a lot of questions and a lot of speculation on Twitter and social media just about who the next Chargers head coach could be, even though they still have their head coach. But hey, this show is about you guys. We want to talk about what you guys want to talk about. And there's a lot of Jim Harbaugh questions out there. So this is from Bolt Up Andrew who asks, would you like to have Jim Harbaugh or any experienced option as a head coach, even if they aren't calling the offensive plays? It could mean that Justin Herbert is learning a new offensive system every one to two years. So this is a very valid concern. Uh, I mean, obviously the Chargers haven't had, you know, even with Justin Herbert, any offensive coordinators that have left for greener pastures and gone on to be, you know, head coaches or offensive coordinators other places after, you know, unless they got fired in the case of Joe Lombardi and isn't calling plays. But I do want to talk about Jim Harbaugh because this is someone that is going to be one of the hottest options right one of the guys that is up at the top of the list for teams that need a head coach in 2024 and David I mean I think there's a lot to like about it I mean I think him not calling offensive plays is a big concern but how would you feel about that if the Chargers went after someone like Jim Harbaugh yeah, I mean, I personally don't really care if the head coach is the one calling offensive plays or not. I mean, that's not really something that that's important to me at this point in time. I understand, you know, them changing the offense for Justin Herbert and him having to learn it. But Justin Herbert has shown the aptitude to be able to learn the offenses. And also, I feel like at this point in his career, there's enough inventory of experiences for him, for him to know what plays he likes, what plays works well for him and what doesn't. So I think he can be more collaborative in that process of building the next offense. But Jim Harbaugh, has a fantastic resume this is a former coach of the year this is a guy who brought his team to the nfc championship game three times was able to win that nfc championship game once where he was able to take his team to the super bowl against his brother uh and of, unfortunately of course he, he lost that one uh and i mean no matter who was going to play that Ravens team. I mean, you get to a Super Bowl, you have a good head start (laughs) over a lot of the other options the Chargers are going to be looking at. That's pretty good. Exactly. And, I mean, of course, I mean, the the record as well, 49 and 22 and 1. That guy's a winner. I mean, that's, that's what you've seen from him as a head coach in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, I my first instinct, you know, and we'll dig deeper into this once the Chargers you know do end up if they decide to let go of Brandon Staley which isn't 100 percent sure yet and we'll talk about you know the chances he stays in the next segment but like you get a former Chargers quarterback which is pretty cool right you also why would he leave Michigan right he's about to be in the playoffs he's potentially playing for a national championship he could win a national championship they're the number one team in the country right now yeah that being said he also got suspended three games this season he probably has more sanctions coming down the road he already got in trouble for basically getting his recruits cheeseburgers, right? And he has some frustrations reportedly with just all of the strictness of the college setting and actually trying to get these recruits and things like that. And you've also seen him already make the leap from the, the college ranks to the NFL ranks already once before. Right. You had him going as the Stanford coach where he was really, really good to the 49ers. He was there for four years, didn't get along with the ownership and the general manager, Trent Balky, in that situation and ended up getting let go. But his worst season the year he got let go was 8-8. Eight and eight. That was the worst season he had as a pro football head coach. And I think <laughs> as far as, like, Michigan goes, I think the cool thing there is, like, you saw him bring them all the way back, 
right? They were a mess before he got there, and now they're consistently and perennially resurrected a co- that college whole playoff franchise. football team, right? And also, just I think the other cool thing is you've seen him surround himself with great coordinators and have those coordinators leave to other, you know, greener pastures, and he's been able to replace those, right? Like his yeah. old, old defensive coordinator is now the defensive coordinator for the Ravens. The Chargers just saw that up close and personal, but yeah, this is a, a lot of this is being talked about right now because Mike Greenberg was on the Pat McAfee show and he said he. Talk to Jim Harbaugh, not about going back to the NFL, but just randomly about the young quarterbacks in the NFL while at a funeral, which is really random. But he said, we were just talking about how great the young quarterback plays in the National Football League. All these great quarterbacks, Mahomes, Burrow, blah, blah, blah. He then spends five minutes saying that he thinks that Justin Herbert is the best of all of them. So he obviously could be interested, you know, and, you know, maybe he wants to go to the Bears where he was also a quarterback and they have a, you know, potentially two of the top three, and four a ton picks. of money. And a ton of money to spend. But the Chargers are going to be one of the top, you know, rated jobs that are going to be available. And I think that, you know, having the offensive system and having to learn a new offensive system would be tough. But I also think that, like, hey, if he gets into a system for a couple of years that he works really well and everything yeah. after that would be somebody else trying to run something similar to that, right? And, and adding right. in some of their own ideas. But it just feels dumb for a team like the Chargers who have been such a mess organizationally. You don't just need an offensive coach. Right. Like that's not all you need. You need someone who can resurrect this franchise and kind of bring them from the dead. That's exactly right. I mean, and I think that's kind of why I, I like the idea of somebody who has been there and has done that not only at the NFL level, but at the collegiate level twice. You know, so this is a guy I think just over his tenure as a coach. He's shown his medal, you know, and the proof is in the pudding. You can see it in the record. And, you know, he this is a guy that, that's legitimately done it at a very high level for a long yeah. time. And it's not all good, right? There's reasons that sure. he left. This was uh, from Joe Staley, his former offensive lineman. He said, obviously, his personality rubs people the wrong way. He's hard to get along with consistently. If you're a Harbaugh guy, you're in his camp. And if you're not, you're very against him. He said that he was a Harbaugh guy in the same article. But, like, he's not for everybody. But, like, I don't know if you can be worried about people's feelings when you need to create an entirely new culture. But we also did get this question from FF Max, who asked, would you rather have Jim Harbaugh as the next head coach or offensive coordinator for the Lions, Ben Johnson, a first-time head coach he would be in that scenario? What do you think? I mean, hey, Ben, when you look at Ben Johnson's resume, especially this year, it's it's pretty sparkling. I mean, this is a guy that, you know, his team is sixth in points, second in yards per game, third in yards per play, fourth in, in, in yards per rush fourth in rushing yards per game I mean that's just about as balanced as it gets that's a top five offense no question about it personally I don't want any more first-time head coaches I mean that's just me I've seen enough the last three head coaches the Chargers employed were first-time head coaches and they did not yield the results that any of us have looked for so yeah. as sparkling as he has been as an offensive coordinator and I feel like he definitely will be a head coach somewhere I don't want another first-time head coach and I totally get that. I mean, Ben Johnson's a guy that could have been a head coach this season, right, and decided to wait. Maybe he wanted to wait out Brandon Staley and was waiting for an opening in Los Angeles. I love Ben Johnson. And I think, you know, he had a bad game a couple of weeks ago and everyone's like, hey, this is the guy you want. It's like, yeah, kind of, because not only is he doing what he's doing, he's doing that with Jared Goff as their quarterback, right? Yeah. Like, it's not like they have a world-beating quarterback. They don't have Patrick Mahomes over there. They're up there with the Patrick Mahomes and all of the great offenses around the NFL, the Eagles and – all of yep. those other teams with Jared Goff, the Cowboys, all those teams, right? All those teams have better quarterbacks than the Lions do. He's still doing it with them. Name the premier playmakers that they have offensively there. I'm on Ross, Ross and Brown. Brown. They have a really, really good offensive line, which I think can hide really a lot good. of things, you yeah. know, and, and the Chargers saw that yeah. firsthand. Yeah. And then, you know, teams like the Bills, like, hey, after they lost Brian Dable, they didn't look the same, right? So, like, no. Having an offensive coach has its advantages. Look at the great coaches around the week, the ones who have been hot recently, especially like Mike McDaniel, like Kyle Shanahan. Sean McVay went to two Super Bowls, right? Andy Reid, one of the best coaches in the league. Those are all offensive coaches. I do love Harbaugh, and I think there's a lot of ways he, as a franchise builder, would be able to kind of pull them out of the mud potentially. But it's hard not to like Ben Johnson as well, I think especially when you see what he's been doing with Jared Goff and those specific skill players that he has over there. So I think it's a really, really good question. But Brand Staley's still here. Is there a chance that he's going to be the coach still in 2024? There actually is, but it's pretty unlikely. We're going to get into that coming up right after this. 
I don't know about you guys, but I hate stressing out during the holidays about what gifts I'm going to get for friends and family. And the good news is today is we are sponsored by a product that is a perfect present for this holiday season. It's the Skylight Digital Picture Frame. And you guys, you have to see it to believe it. Skylight is a touchscreen photo frame that you can send photos to straight from your phone and they appear in seconds. You can even preload photos to the box before the box is even open, giving it a perfect personal touch for whoever you're going to give it to. I'm sure they're going to appreciate that. For me, I think I'm going to get one for my wife. My wife never watches the show, so I mean, I'm safe saying that here, but the thought is, hey, get the, get the skylight picture frame, upload pictures of you know some sonograms and some of the ultrasound pictures that we have, give that to her for Christmas. She's sleeping, so hopefully she doesn't hear this, but you know who else loves this? Grandparents. People love personal touches with their gifts, you ha don't even have to think about what you're going to get now because you can go with the Skylight Digital Picture Frame, plus the satisfaction is guaranteed. You have a free returns up to 120 days, and they're also a top-rated brand with over a million happy customers and thousands of five-star reviews. So as a special limited-time offer for our listeners, you can get $15 off your purchase of that Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash locked on. To get that $15 off, skylightframe.com slash locked on. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash Locked on. Let's continue this Chargers mailbag, David, because we do have a lot of questions. So thank you to everyone who hit us up at Locked on LEC and all the everydayers for checking us out because it is your team every day. And we have a lot of questions still about Brandon Staley. And we'll start with this one from Nick who asks, what is the minimum bar where you think that the Chargers would actually have to consider keeping Brandon Staley? Is it winning out? Is it winning one playoff game? David, where's the line for you? Yeah, I mean, I think I've maintained the same kind of stance, you know, since the beginning of this season. The, the bar for me has not changed. It's you need to make it to the playoffs and you need to win at least one playoff game. I don't really care where they're at in their current standing right now. I mean, obviously they need to win out. I mean, that I think that's a, an automatic, but yeah. it's not just enough to win out. It's not enough to get back to the playoffs. You have to win in the playoffs before I can even consider the idea of retaining Brandon Staley. Yeah, I mean, you probably have to win out to get in. Uh, winning out doesn't win you a playoff game, obviously, and that's what nope. it was before the season. Should it change now? No. I mean, are they dealing with bad circumstances, you know, missing a lot of big-time players? Sure. That's the case so with everybody the Chargers. Else. Every single season, obviously, the Chargers. It feels like from the inside looking out more than other teams as far as how important the players are that they lose. But I think it also comes with, hey, probably continued success from this defense, right? Can you get yeah. this to be an above-average defense by the end of the year? 19th Definitely. in points per game allowed right now. Creeping up on just about average, which is what we said we would take before the season starts, right? But That's true. It is a playoff win, you know, and, and that's why it's so unlikely and why we're talking about Jim Harbaugh right now because you're 5-7, and seven, and a playoff win is probably what it's going to take. But yeah. That hasn't always been the case with Chargers coaches, right? If Brandon Staley gets fired after this year, it would be them straying away from kind of what they've done in the past. And I think that's why Chris Saiz here is asking today, would you be surprised if Brandon Staley keeps his job for at least one more season? Players seem to like him. What do you think? So, David, I'll put the parameters around this of just basically like, I think this is assuming, okay, hey, he doesn't run the table and win a playoff game, which we think, hey, that probably secures his job for another season, whether you like him or not, right? Yeah. If that doesn't happen, say they end the season strong, they get to nine and eight, somewhere around there, they don't make the playoffs or make the playoffs and don't win a game. Would you be surprised if Brandon Staley keeps his job next season? Yeah, I would be. I, st I still would be pretty surprised at that. I mean, I, I think making it to the playoffs at, in, at this juncture is pretty miraculous, I, I think. I mean, their, their chances are, are pretty slim. You'd have Obviously, to do a hell of a job. Yeah, Everything I mean. that they want is still in front of them. They have to handle their business. But we've seen throughout the last several years that that's not always something that the Chargers have been able to do. So, yeah, I, I don't see it. I don't think there's, you know, I don't think that would be enough for him to be able to retain his job. Uh, I, I just think that no matter what the, the players say about him, no matter how they care about him, this is a results-based business. You either win or they're going to try to find somebody else who they believe can win. That's it. Bottom line. One of the reasons I liked Staley so much at the beginning was a lot of the testimonials that you heard from some of his former players and, and how much guys liked playing for him and the connection that he made with those guys. But the other thing was, is like he had those connections and he came from, you know, three separate defenses that were all really, really good. So you had 
not just the relationships, but you also actually had them producing top-ranked defenses year in and year out, which is an important part of that, right? Anthony Lynn and Mike McBoy both got four years. They had worse records in some of those years, too, than what Brandon Staley's probably going to end up with this year, right? I mean, Mike McCoy had a 5-11 and and a 4-12 and season. He did get fired after one of those, yeah. but, like, he survived 4-12, and right? Like, which is pretty, pretty surprising and, you know, dealt with a lot of the same injuries and things like that. But I think the thing, too, is like Mike McCoy was just the guy standing next to Peyton Manning. Like, maybe don't go get a guy just because he's next to a, a really, really good quarterback. Yeah. Guys like Anthony Lynn was always more of just a leadership guy that didn't bring much to the table X's and O's wise because mostly right. he was a running back coach, right? Right. I would be surprised if he's around because, like, it just feels like the standard is different right now, which is a good thing, right? Like, I think you know that it's unacceptable. And I think a lot of people would say, hey, well, he shouldn't have even brought, been brought back for this season because the standard should have been high enough that if you do what he did in the playoffs last year, you don't get another chance, right? And that's fair. Yeah. I don't think that even with the, you know, Spanos' record of being cheap, Barnaby, I'm sorry we didn't get to get to your voicemail today. I know you had questions about, you know, the, the Spanos being cheap and them actually not being that cheap. They have been cheap as far as head coaches go, right? And, and letting coaches finish their contract, hiring first-time head coaches instead of proven experienced players. But they were also in on the Urban Meyer sweepstakes last year or, you know, the, the brain and stable year when he got hired, right? Thank God that didn't happen. That was an absolute train wreck. Yeah. But yeah, I'd still be surprised. It, it feels like the organization made it clear to him what the guidelines were this season. If he won a playoff game and they still fired him this year, I would be surprised if he yes. wasn't back in 2024. So let's get this last one here from Rob Keenan, who asks, along with a win, what would you need to see from this team on Sunday that would give you the confidence that they can run the table and be playing in a win and get in in week 18? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think for that, I mean, the first first thing offensively is you got to get some kind of running game going. I mean, you, you you can't help or hope to put teams away if you can't run the football when they know that you, you're going to run the football against them. And the Chargers have had no semblance of that whatsoever pretty much all season long. No drops from the receivers. I got to have the receivers catch the football. That like That's a big one. There's been a lot of big plays that have been missed because of balls being dropped. And I need to see the defense, one, hold the Broncos under 20 points. And I need to see the defense generate multiple turnovers. I think those are all things that I need to see for me to have any confidence that I feel like they have the ability to run the table. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it starts with it has to be kind of a dominant win, right? Like, I don't think right. anyone's going to believe in that if you win, you know, 24 to 21 on a last second, you know, them missing a field goal, right? right? So, like, how the game goes matters. It does. At the same time, I I don't know if there's anything they can do this weekend to, to prove to me or to give me confidence that they're going to run the table. Because like we talked about before on yesterday's show, right? Get to 500 first and then we'll talk. Right. Because... At winning one game at home against the Broncos, like, I don't know if I can pick them to win right now. The Broncos have been playing much better than them. I'm excited for the crossover Thursday tomorrow with Locked On Broncos to kind of get into this matchup a little bit more. But I think another thing is playing complimentary football, right? How about that? How about play complimentary football? That is something we have not seen from this team and I think would go a long way. I think having a dominant win, having a win where, you know, you're seeing it on both sides kind of come together, I think is a huge you know, way to kind of feel better about this team and what they can do down the stretch. But like I said, I don't know if there's one single thing, David, that they could do. Like we need to see them win multiple games in a row or else how are you going to run the table? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's absolutely something that needs, needs to happen. Uh, I, it, it's just the, the first building block. I mean, how, how about beating a quality team? I mean, that, that's another thing. I, I think obviously the Broncos are a team that has rip, ripped off a you know a few wins in a row before you know losing their last game, but you know I think they're a team that was you know trending in the upward direction, and so I think you know we have yet to see the the Chargers have kind of that quality like real high quality win this year, and I think you know beating the Broncos would would be you know a step in that direction for sure. He'd be beating someone you know a Super Bowl winning head coach, which would be a good start. But yeah, a team that just won five games in a row, but obviously the Chargers' problems are all over the place, offense defense the one place they're not is special teams because ryan ficken is the man but if you can only keep one are you keeping kellen moore who could actually you know continue this offense with justin herbert and get some continuity there are you going to go with ryan ficken a special teams coordinator right who has been a true godsend to this team we're going to talk about that coming up right after this 
First, though, I do need to tell you guys about Prize Picks, which is daily fantasy made easy. With Prize Picks, all you have to do is select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. It's that simple, guys. The more entries you hit on, the more you can win. You can go up to six entries on one, right? And if you hit six on the same entry, you can get 25 times your money. The other thing about Prize Picks is they offer great weekly promotions. My favorite one, hands down, is obviously Taco Tuesday. On Taco Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So that means instead of Keenan Allen having to go for more or less than 100 receiving yards, you could get him at more or less than 75 receiving yards. But that's all you have to do to play. It's super simple. For this weekend, you go with Keenan Allen going for more or less than 86 and a half receiving yards and pair that either with Justin Herbert's passing yards, Austin Eckler's rushing yards. If you hit on just two, you can win. So go to pricepicks.com slash lockdown NFL and use the code lockdown NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's pricepicks.com slash lockdown NFL, promo code lockdown NFL for that first deposit match up to $100. Price Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. I also need to tell you guys about FanDuel, which is the only place that I place my bets when I can. And as the weather gets colder, the NFL offers to stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. That means all you have to do, go to FanDuel, find the matchup that you like the most. Find the biggest favorite on the card that week. As long as that team wins by one point or 20 points, you win $150 in those bonus bets. So that's just one of the great promotions they have going on. They also a lot of times have great promotions on Thursday Night Football, so make sure you guys check that out. Getting no sweat bets for big time parlays and things like that. For this weekend, very interestingly enough, FanDuel has the Chargers as two and a half point favorites against the Broncos. That is interesting. I mean, I think it's going to be close. I think we would all agree on that. But two and a half points, can they cover it? We will see. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to kick off the NFL season in style. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. David, we have more Chargers mailbag questions to get into here because we had a really, really good batch and we're not going to be able to get into all of them. It's here. I love you. I promise you will be on the next Chargers mailbag show. But I do need to tell you guys that Locked On has also launched the first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top stories of the day with local experts the only way that Locked On can. So make sure you guys are checking out Locked On Sports Today and subscribing to them on YouTube for that first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel. Dave, let's get to the rest of these here. We have a really, really good question here from Brandon Mitchell who asked on YouTube, if we blow up the coaching staff after the season and we had to choose one coordinator to keep, would you choose Ryan Ficken or Kellen Moore? There's only one answer here. There is only one answer, and uh, you know people might be surprised at my answer here. Uh, I mean, you look at Kellen Moore, who's been 11th in points per game, 14th in yards per play, Fifth in red zone scoring percentage, so it's been fantastic with that. But the running game has been really bad. 26th yeah. in yards per rush, 25th in rush yards per game. Ryan Ficken has turned one of the worst special teams units in the league into the best special teams unit in the league, according to DVOA. So I'm going with Ryan Ficken. Ryan Ficken has been an absolute godsend for this Chargers special teams unit. He has completely overhauled it. They have dedicated resources, both signing players and yeah. drafting players specifically to make the special teams unit better. And you have seen not only results, but drastic results. Yeah, I mean, do whatever you have to do. Make him the you know assistant head coach. Whatever kind of title bump you can do. Give it to him. Give him whatever he wants. And that's one of, the, one of the saddest parts. If the Chargers decide to clean house is just losing potentially Ryan Ficken. You know, new guy maybe wants to bring in his own guys. But if I'm whatever new coach, it's like, hey, I'll take this job. As long as Ryan Ficken stays on as this team's special teams coordinator. Because that man has been a godsend. And I honestly don't even think it's like a swipe at Kellen Moore. Like, I've actually really liked what Kellen Moore has been able to yeah. do. I mean, I think the running game and the lack thereof is what's going to hold you back from that. But I think as far as like... People keep comparing Kellen Moore to Joe Lombardi. Like, I think Kellen Moore's done a much better job with Joe, Justin Herbert than Joe Lombardi ever did. I, I think the deep uh, intermediate plus passing attack has oh, been yeah. so much better. Like, he is Definitely. going down the field so much more, even if you can't tell it just watching the games. But, like, those chunk plays, those 20 plus yard plays have been way better for the Chargers. Oh, yeah. They're definitely. a much more explosive offense in the passing game. 
and he's had to have his first season as offense coordinator without their you know two of their top three receivers for big chunks of this season so yeah. I think Kellen Moore has done a really good job and I don't think you've been able to see it the last couple of weeks because you know drop passes and just you know playing against the Baltimore Ravens who will do that to you but like Packers game should have been 35 plus points he scored 38 against the Lions like I think he's actually done a pretty good job but Ryan Ficken is just the man. That's what takes us to our next question here from LRH88, who asks, is the special teams problem fixed? David just told you, I mean, I think it was Eric Smith who put out there that the Chargers are first in DVOA in their special teams department, which is an insane turnaround because this is something, I mean, you think back to what is that, 2008, 2010 season where the Chargers are number one in offense and defense, the worst special teams unit in the league, do not make the playoffs, right? Yeah, yeah. But, David, I think at this point, it's very safe to say that the Chargers' special teams problems are fixed. 100% they're fixed. It's been uh, an absolute joy and a pleasure to be able to watch this uh, special teams unit when just a few short years ago, you were scared that a punt was going to get blocked, that uh, a punt returner was going to go backwards, that they were going to miss the you know the easy field goals, that they had no chance at hitting the 50-plus yard field goals. And now you have this year where you have Cameron Dicker, your kicker, that's hit 19 of 20 field goals. He's made all 30 of his extra points. You have J.K. Scott, who just went crazy in the last game, where he dropped seven punts inside the 20, including yeah. four inside the 10. You you signed an all-pro long snapper who's been fantastic, and you have a punt returner who currently leads the, the NFL in punt return yards at 16, or excuse me, punt return average at 16.6 yards per punt return so every facet of this charger special teams unit has been fantastic and there's been one common denominator that is the special teams guru ryan ficken yeah i mean i think the the nice thing is like okay well you found your kicker for the future with you know ryan ficken there right no more nick roses or roberto aguayos or taylor bertolettes or michael badgley's or tristan viscainos or caleb uh. sturgis's or travis coons <laughs> He can be here all day. I could go more. I could go longer. (laughs) This is an underrated part to me, David. That special teams unit never gets penalized. They never never get penalized. Yeah, it's true. You see those penalties all over. Anytime there's a punt return, like, so easy with a guy who's running back and forth to be able to stay on those blocks and not get a holding call or to not block somebody in the back. When you're trying to run and get an angle on somebody, they're never penalized there, right? That's beautiful. They have not had a punt or a field goal blocked during his tenure, right? If I wasn't married, I'd marry Ryan Pickham. Like, that's <laughs> that's where I'm at. But, like, Darius Davis, already one of the best punt return men in the league. You have maybe the best kicker in the league right now with Cameron Dicker. You, you, you brought in an all-pro long snapper. Like, the special teams are fully, fully fixed. And a lot of that has to do with Ryan Ficken. So, we have one voicemail I want to get into here, David. Let's get it in with Matthew real quick talking about running backs. Hey guys, this is Matthew. I love you guys' show. Listen to it every day, driving to work. This running game has been so bad the past three seasons. So I'm wondering, is this a number one priority in the draft or off season that has to be fixed? Let me know what you guys think. Keep it up. Love you guys. Family trust respect. What's up, baby? I always love the family trust respect. David, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's not like they haven't made it a priority. I mean, the last you look at the last, you know, you know, several drafts besides this current draft here in 2023 Three of the last four drafts, they drafted three running backs, you know, and they've also drafted multiple offensive linemen in the first round. So it's not like they haven't, you know, allocated resources and trying to fix it. They just haven't had a lot of success. And yeah. for me personally, especially this year, um, I've seen enough of Austin Eckler and, 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 you know, Joshua Kelly, you know, trying to bang their head against the wall, not getting any traction. I think it's time now, finally to see what Isaiah Spiller has. I, I'm so, I'm sorry. There really is no more excuse uh, after you had a game where you literally ran the ball 24 times for 29 yards for 1.2 yards per carry. There's no excuse. I, I don't care what you're trying to tell me that he hasn't earned it in, in the, Nobody's earned it. No one's earned it on game day. So how are you going to sit here and tell me that you have a running back that's barely been active but five games this season is not getting an opportunity to show what he can possibly do to jumpstart a running game that's one of the worst in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, Staley's comments on him are pretty damning, right? Saying he has to earn it on the practice field before he'll be activated on game day to make the, the 48, as he put how it. Much worse could it look? How much worse could that, it be? That's, uh, that's what I wonder. Is like, How bad it, does Isaiah Spiller look? Uh, do, do players get cursed when they come on the Locked on Chargers podcast? That's a, that's a conversation for another day. Because we had Isaiah Spiller. We had Quentin Johnston. We had Austin Eckler. 
uh, the list goes on and on from that standpoint. So we'll, we'll be careful about that going forward. But I think what they're asking here is like, hey, okay, you took three day three running backs and not a single one of them has worked out. Is it time to spend more premier capital on the running back position and not wait so long in the draft before you go get one of these guys, right? And the hard thing is, is like you have so many holes on your roster and you have holes at much bigger, much more important positions, right? Cornerback, a tight right. end, offensive line, probably, you know, like defensive line. Like there's yeah. so many holes on this team. It's like, how do you, you know, actually show, like say how that do you prioritize that over and put running some back of those over others. those? Yeah, yeah, some of those other spots. So. Man, it's really bad right now. I think there's a lot, you know, but it really comes down to just the picks that they've tried to have to fix that issue have totally missed, and that's a Tom Telesco thing too, right? And it's all it all goes hand in hand. Tom Telesco, Brain Staley, not good enough. John Spano is president of football operations, not good enough. Not good this enough. franchise as a whole, not good enough at putting people around Justin Herbert for this team to succeed. So we'll have much more about that later on, but make sure you guys are back here tomorrow for Crossover Thursday, Locked on Broncos. Locked on Chargers. So excited to talk to the team that got Sean Payton, who looks like he's the right guy after the Chargers seemingly missed out on him. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. And if the Chargers can finally get their running game going against a terrible, terrible run defense in Denver. So make sure you guys are back here for that. But until then, to make sure you don't miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked on Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. You can also find the show every day on our social media. Thank you to everyone who hit us up on Twitter at Locked on LAC. You can also hit us up on Instagram at Locked on Chargers and our Locked On Chargers Facebook page. We post the show every day to all of those places. And thank you to everyone who called in the voicemail line at 323-524-7924. If you leave a 30-second Chargers question on there, it's likely to get on the show. But make sure you guys are back here tomorrow, one of the best days of the week. It's crossover Thursday. But until then, guys, take it easy and go Bolts.